Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1. I have successfully finished Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, 100% through with every character. Before I get into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, I want to rank the maps in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 from worst to best. I will be looking at aesthetic, gameplay, and objectives. Number 9 is Downhill Jam. This should come as a surprise to nobody. Downhill Jam is a terrible map. You start from the top of a hill and you roll to the bottom. Looks like it's a sort of Hoover Dam, it's kind of weird. And you're opening a bunch of valves for some reason. But the valves aren't the issue. The issue is once you're done with the map, it's, it's over. You can't go back up. The hill is too steep where if you miss anything, you can't really get back to get it. The E and skate is way too difficult to get. Admittedly, the hidden tape is actually pretty cool. But the map fights you so much that it's hard to even get to it at times because you wall right the edge of a cliff or something. Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam deserves a spot as one of the worst maps in Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Number 8 is The Mall. Another one of those maps that you go from the top to the bottom and it just ends. Tends to be a trend there, huh? Admittedly, the mall isn't as bad as Downhill Jam. Nowhere close. I love the aesthetic in the mall, I really do. Skateboard in the mall, that's awesome. The issue with the mall is once you miss something, if you want to go back up to get it, you're going to have to fight through the map. It flows a lot better than Downhill Jam does though. The hidden tape can be a little difficult to get just to time it right, but it's not to the point to where you think, oh, I just can't do this, I'm going to get off this game. There is one secret area, quotation mark secret area in the map. It's just one room. It's just kind of there. The mall isn't that good of a map, but it's not the worst one either. Number seven is Burnside. You know, I'm not a big fan of this map. I think it, the aesthetic is that it's a real life skate park, but to me it just looks like concrete with a bunch of shit thrown into it. I like the Neversoft eyeball though. That thing's a good, uh, that's a good little touch. But overall, Burnside is just kind of a, there. I usually like competition levels, but it just doesn't do anything. Number six is Streets. Now this is another one of those maps where you look at, you know, once again, it doesn't look like much. But there are some cool things here. The graffiti actually has a bunch of references to uh, skateboarding around. There's a a story to be told with the shootings and the cop cars. The hidden tape is really difficult to get, but it's also the last objective map, so I'm not really sure what you can really say about it then. There's plenty of things to skate on once you find it, which is, can be a little bit of an issue. I would say there's a secret area, but the E is in the part where I would consider secret, and there's also another area where I would consider secret, but the T is there. So Streets is a cool map, it's not the greatest map in the world, you get run over by cable cars and Leo in the van, that's whatever. Number 5 is Downtown, admittedly, I thought I would like this map more than I did. I thought I liked it in Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, but then we're not talking about that game. Downtown is set in Minneapolis, and there's a taxi driver that is really annoying because he will run you down at first I thought the objectives were pretty hard if, but when you really think about it anything in this map is really accessible without really doing any tricks or anything once you get good at the game and know the map you can go wherever you want and that's great that's a great design it's just kind of hard to navigate at times especially when going downhill and there's like dirt and it really slows you down that's not fun the taxi, once again, the taxi driver is just an asshole. Number four is Roswell. Roswell is takes place in the Area 51 setting, which personally I'm not a big fan of, but it is pretty cool aesthetic. There's secret areas where the aliens yell and help me getting dissected and UFOs behind lasers. Also, it's a competition level, and I love me some competition levels. Not to mention the map itself is actually kind of fun to skate around. You have a pretty cool gap going from one side to the other. You got a rail that looks like it's trickable onto another rail. It's not really, but it's cool that it looks like it is. 
I like Roswell. It's the last map you get in the game, but whatever. Number three is school. I like school. Well, that's something I never thought I'd ever say. The aesthetic for this is tremendous. It's an ab it's I guess maybe it's not abandoned. I don't know whether it's abandoned or not, but it's a school and you skate around in it. The objectives of this are perfect. The hidden tape is in a great spot where you say, oh, I can get that and it's easy to get to once you know how to do it. The grind of five tables are great as well because you can actually get them all into one loop. The map kind of loops around, I guess. You start off from like the top of a balcony like thing. You go down, you hit a grind, which is easy gap. You go down and get S. The only thing that's weird, the skate's kind of located kind of weird in terms of where they're like located with the rest of the objectives. It's not that bad. School is an amazing map. It truly is. Number two. This is Warehouse. Now this is the map you're going to see when you first start the game up. And this map is amazing. It's just a warehouse. There's some stuff to skate in and go there. This is the perfect first map in any game ever. I'm telling you that right now. Smash the boxes can be a little annoying, but it kind of gets you used to the game and how platformy it kind of is. The hint tape is perfect right above the half pipe. That's amazing. Skate's also tremendous because it's so small you can see where they all are. And because it's the very first map in the game, there's not too many points to get. Warehouse is a tremendous map and it's iconic because of how many games it's in and it was the very first one. Number one. Well, due to the process of elimination, you probably already figured this out, but it is Chicago Street Park. I love this map. Remember when I said I like competition levels? This is why I like competition levels. This was the map that was in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater demo, by the way. It's just a flat warehouse. There's a bunch of stuff to skate in. It's early in the game to where it's not too difficult, but it is a competition level. There's a cool little sky grind thing that you can go on. This map is amazing. You got bowls, you got half pipes, you got stuff to grind, you got crazy stuff to grind. Love this map. This is the map I go to more than any other map in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1. It takes place in an indoor skate park, which is actually not a thing because there are none in Chicago. Fun fact. So this map to me takes the number one spot as the best map of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, like and subscribe. I got Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 coming up. And that one's going to take me a long time because there's a lot more stuff to do in that one. Thanks for watching.